Hi, I'm Arikia Milliken, and for two years I worked with Nate Silver on his new book, The Signal and the Noise. Um, most of you probably know Nate from 538.com, uh, but maybe now some of you know him as the Kurt Cobain of statistics, which is what the Boston Globe declared him. Um, but I, <laughs> totally awesome and totally fitting uh, title because they both took something they love that was a really niche topic in the industry and totally transformed the whole industry. So I learned a lot about stats and a lot about life from working with Nate. And one of the most important things is that if you're bored, do something else. Um, Nate was bored working as a consultant for an accountant firm. And so he took his passion for baseball and developed the PCOTA system to predict the success of Major League Baseball players. Before that, he had a blog called Burrito Bracket where he tried to predict the best burrito in Chicago by sampling them all. Um, and so working with him, I got to sample a lot of burritos and I learned a lot about rating systems too in doing that. Um, and so one of the things we learned from interviewing the founders of Yelp was that when people rate something, they'll usually only rate it if they love it or hate it. If they're in the middle, they'll forego the rating. And so that can be um, problematic when you're trying to predict what people will like. We interviewed the founder, one of the Netflix challenge winners, and the movie that is the most difficult to predict is Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, regardless of the user's profile, Netflix and their algorithm cannot predict if people will like Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, that's because perfect predictions are impossible. If we knew, um, Everything about the world, all the existing conditions, uh, everything about how the laws govern the universe, in theory, we would be able to make perfect predictions, but we don't. And sometimes that's upsetting to people, especially in certain scenarios where it threatens their livelihood. Um, and so people tend to make these emotionally driven predictions, which result in wrong predictions, uh, as the most egregious case was in the housing bubble of 2008. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the so-called experts that we see um, we can't rely on their predictions. Uh, one of Nate's favorite studies uh, by Philip Tetlock uh, figured out that when political experts try to predict things, uh, they're no better than flipping a coin. And that's because, and a lot of times they're worse than flipping a coin, and these are the people that are cited the most in the media. And this is because uh, bias is unavoidable, and a lot of times people ignore their own biases when they're making predictions. Um, and, and other times, and to avoid making false predictions, uh, they will simply not make predictions, and then after the fact, they will go back and say, oh yeah, of course I saw that coming. Uh, this is what we call a black swan event, um, which is another way to make false predictions. And one of the things about human nature is that people tend to see patterns where there are none. Um, when you're dealing with a really noisy data set, this is, uh, especially common, and a lot of times complexity uh, is mistaken for randomness when really we just don't have all the tools needed to interpret noisy data. Um, but we try, and one of the fields that we do that in is uh, atmospheric forecasting, which Nate compares to NASCAR because you can't really predict atmospheric conditions like hurricanes more than a week in advance. Uh, just like in a NASCAR game, the starting position gives you a pretty good idea of where they'll be after a few laps around the track, but not after so many, a couple dozen. Uh, in the field of weather forecasting, uh, people, the weather forecasters will actually um, over predict the precipitation rate so that people aren't angry when they leave their apartments without an umbrella and have to buy one of those shitty New York umbrellas. Um, and so ultimately, uh, we make the best predictions when human beings and computers work together. Um, in just the field of hurricane forecasting, it's improved 350% in the past 25 years. People, oh, <laughs> and this is, you know, if, if only robots could help us predict the one thing in life that maybe uh, we want the most, which is dating. And so my favorite interview, which didn't make it into the book, was with the founders of OkCupid. Um, you can game the system by having a human interaction with people on there, message response message. Um, so one of the best lessons from Nate is that if you're annoyed at how other people are doing things, do it better. He was sitting in an airport when he got the idea for 538.com, listening to poor predictions, and that revolutionized the industry. And speaking of airports, <laughs> Nate conducts probability density curves of his likelihood of making it to an event on time. <laughs> and I've actually had to hold an airplane for him, which I didn't know was possible, but it is. Um, and so everyone in the world is just an email or phone call away. Um, and that might be biased because everyone 
like Snate, uh, in the success rate of the in, the, in planning the book, uh, we interviewed 100 people and only one person declined. So thank you.